Good morning, everybody. So I'm, I'm not going to get too I'm not going to get too technical to start the morning. Um, I was asked to sort of kick off this sec session and um, to introduce us to some of the changes we've made um, in the chapter. Uh, we did a we did an update. Um, probably submitted it in 2020 at this point, so it took a little while for it to get through, but our chapter's finally updated. Um, and then just to kind of talk about some of the presentations we have coming today and what sort of areas you can expect them uh, to be in. Um, but first, you know, we're published. The guide is out. The updated guide is out. Um, I really want to thank April especially because she uh, really helped with the rewrite of this chapter. She led all of the work for the addition of the iron sulfide uh, mineralization section in the chapter, uh, but also to Thano, Leandro, and Anol, all who gave significant uh, sections to help update this chapter. Uh, and then the rest of the 201H subcommittee who did a lot of vetting, um, editing, and work to get it, to get it through. Um, our chapter was, the chapter five was significantly revamped in 2016. Um, and so we didn't actually have a lot of work to do other than the addition of the iron sulfide section. Um, so it was, uh, that's thanks to Jason Eidecker and Mike Thomas. And so I just sort of built up off of their previous work. Uh, but, um, the new revision to 201 also has, uh, new, um, updates to the sulfate chapter the physical salt attack chapter, and the abrasion chapter. So uh, if you're working in any of those areas, I suggest taking a moment to go and flip through the new version. So what's different um, with our new chapter? Uh, we really updated the scope of the chapter uh, up through 2016. This really was chapter five was alkali aggregate reactions, and that was all it focused on. With this new chapter, we kept that alkali aggregate focus um, on one side, but we in included all aggregate reactions. So now we're also including iron sulfide uh, mineral oxidation. So we are, you know, expanding this scope as we learn more about uh, new things happening in the area. And I'm sure someday we'll add something else that we discover is causing our concrete to fall apart. Uh, but this was this was the big lifting for the chapter. So here's our outline for the first half of the chapter, which is our AAR section. Um, the sections in orange had very minimal changes to them. Sections in green had some significant changes, and the sections in black really didn't change at all. Um, our minor changes to the early sections of the chapter was really just updating the state of the art of where we are and understanding how ACR, alkali carbonate reaction, and alkali silica reaction occur. Um, updating our references, making sure everything is current with where we are. Um, you know, our, our understanding of these has changed um, in very specific technical ways in the last seven years, uh, but the the broader sort of process is still roughly the same. And so, you know, we're, we're constantly advancing on a very scientific level right now, uh, but I would say that our broader understanding of the basic mechanism of these is still uh, was still pretty current, so we didn't have to add too much. We did have a big change in the evaluating aggregates for potential alkali aggregate reactivity section. Um, we decided to really focus on established and standardized test methods. Um, so if you, if there were test methods that were through the vetting process in ASTM, AASHTO, CSA, RILEM, um, these were the test methods we focused on. It doesn't necessarily mean that because it was a vetted test method that we agreed that that test method should be used, uh, but we covered all of the ones that are out there um, as a standardized method. And so we did add quite a bit of commentary to uh, those sections to make sure that people knew um, what was the best way to go about testing. Um, you know, uh, your CPT, the concrete prism test, is still sort of the gold standard, even though we're starting to learn it might have, uh, you know, certain issues, but that's really, uh, as far as this goes, uh, still the best test uh, that we have. Um, we did add um, a lot of additional information on the role of field exposure sites. Uh, and so if you are uh, somebody who's 
interested in setting up a field exposure site, this is a great first stop to see a lot of references on how to do that, um, what are other people doing, uh, especially if you want to set up one of those sites, uh, it's best if you kind of follow the standards everyone else is so that we can carry, uh, we can compare all of that information. The more of these field exposure sites we can get going, the better our understanding of our test methods will be. Um, so that's really the main changes that we had in that chapter. Uh, similar in the tests for evaluating preventive measures, uh, we, we pared that chapter down to really specifically tests that are standardized and what the committee uh, felt were the best practices for ASR and ACR uh, prevention that we know today. Um, and making sure that people understood the differences between those tests and what sort of information you can get from each one of them. Finally, um, the last section, protocols for minimizing risk of ASR. This was a brand new section in 2016. Um, if you're familiar with ASTM C1778, this is along those same lines. Um, we really deferred to C1778 since we know that that is where the majority of the work and it, and the updates are coming more regular in C1778 than they're coming in 201. Um, to be honest, it's the same people in the room in 201 as in 1778. We're writing the documents the same. So, uh, you know, we, we gave a summary of 1778, made sure that um, it was up to date with what's currently in 1778. Uh, but, you know, the gold standard is to actually go to that ASTM document and, and don't tell anyone at ACI that I told you that. Uh, so before I get into the iron sulfide work, um, I want to kind of give an overview of our talks today uh, for further information on AAR. Really all of our talks are focused on ASR today, uh, so if you're here for ACR, uh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Uh, but we've got four main areas uh, that are going to be covered. Uh, understanding of ASR mechanisms, ASR test methods, prevention of ASR, uh, which often is referred to as mitigation, but we're trying to change that from mitigation to prevention. And then ASR case studies. Uh, so our first, uh, our first area in ASR mechanisms is going to be uh, just after 10 a.m. from Dr. Jason Eidecker of Oregon State University. Um, he's going to be study, looking at a new approach to prevent alkali silica reaction in concrete alkali sensitivity evaluation. There is some prevention in there. He's going to show up again in that section. Uh, but um, there's also quite a lot of interesting new work on mechanisms. Um, and then in the second session, uh, Dr. Leandro Sanchez of the University of Ottawa is going to work on combined CT scan and scanning electron microscope protocols uh, for understanding alkali silica reaction. For ASR test methods, uh, at 11.30, uh, Anol will be giving um, a talk on the innovative performance-based approach using emerging test methods for evaluating um, effectiveness and of conventional alternative SCMs to mitigate ASR. And uh, at 12, Dr. Stephanie Wood from the Army Corps of Engineers will be talking about the assessment of, the ag of aggregate reactivity using the ultra-rapid autoclave test method. And finally, at 12.30, uh, Dr. Rangaraju from Clemson will be um, discussing the AASHTO T380 MCPT test. Um, so these are uh, some good talks on, on test methods. Um, these are all really test methods that are not necessarily in our document because these are newer um, things that are still, we're still in development as we were writing. Uh, for prevention of ASR, uh, Terry is going to give us a talk uh, uh, later this morning on alkali threshold, a powerful ASR risk management tool. And in a similar vein, um, looking at alkalis, that same talk that I mentioned earlier from Dr. Eidecker um, is also going to work on uh, prevention as well. And then uh, Thano is going to give us a talk, uh, I think next, on improving guidance uh, to ASTM C1778 for mitigating ASR. So if you don't know 1778, Tano's going to give you a lot of good information about what it is and where it's going. Finally, Jim's going to give us uh, a bit of a case study on Pennsylvania's experiences 
with um, implementing ASR specifications. Uh, so this should be really interesting uh, to see kind of how all of these uh, documents are actually put into practice. Our new section on iron sulfide uh, mineralization is quite extensive. Um, you know, this is still a, an emerging area. We don't know uh, everything that we need to know about this. We don't know much about testing and what the right testing protocol is, but it's a very fast moving area because there's a lot of policy and quite honestly bad policy coming out trying to tell uh, folks to test for things that we may or may not actually be able to test for. Um, and so if you are working in areas where you, this might be a concern or with clients who have a concern, I suggest reading this because uh, this is going to be a really good overview for you for iron sulfide mineralization or, or pyrotite attack. So this can be broken down into mechanisms, test methods, and case studies again. Um, for mechanisms, we have a talk from uh, Zhang Zhao Li from Pennsylvania State University on the kinetics of iron sulfide oxidation in simulated, that should say simulated pore solutions. I didn't finish the sentence, apparently. Um, and then for test methods, uh, Leanna Santos from Connecticut is going to be talking about uh, development of a test method to determine the content of sulfates and sulfides in concrete foundations. So that's a field test. Um, and then uh, Mishak Ojo, also from Connecticut, is going to talk about insights into laboratory testing of expansion um, for iron sulfide. And then uh, Jonathan Gorley is going to talk about direct pyrotite testing and map cracking risk assessment. Um, so this is going to be really interesting. This is, uh, test methods are for this are emerging. We don't have anything standardized in this area yet, uh, but there's a lot of growth that needs to happen. And finally, we've got a couple of case studies. Uh, first from um, Castillo Ariza Rodolfo from Laval uh, on environmental conditions in concrete housing foundation walls. Uh, oh, I thought there was one more. Um, maybe I didn't save it when I wrote it in there last night. Apologies. Um, but so I think, you know, we're going to have a really good slate of talks today. Uh, this is an area that, you know, even though we've been working on ASR for 70 plus years now, um, it's still evolving and rapidly evolving in lots of ways. So I hope you stick around for all these talks today. Thank you.